Hi everybody, this is Adam Baragzai over at AHS Realty Pros. In this video today, I'm going to show you guys how to go ahead and set up a buyer template on zip forms. And we're going to be using the new Digital Inc. 2.0, which is free and part of your CAR membership. So follow along. Um, and if you guys are new to the whole AHS brand and family, check out ahsrealtypros.com. And right here, click on RE Agents and click right here 100 percent commission uh frequently asked questions and literally we give you everything you want to know in black and white guys super uh, simple and let me go ahead and show you guys how we go ahead and get this started so you want to go to car.org and car stands for california association of realtors to make it easier for you to remember and what you normally do is you log in right here I'm actually already logged in and once it says your name in the right hand corner right here click on the little state map and once that happens you're gonna go ahead and click right here and now you gotta wait a couple of seconds and what should happen this should turn yellow I'm gonna click on that and when you access your zip forms plus account this is your dashboard right here and we're gonna go ahead and travel on down to the right right here where it says templates and I have two templates that I really use one is for listings one is for offers and then I have a publications template just because it's got a lot of great forms that um, we should be familiar with so if you ever get a chance check that out and I can do a, another video if you guys leave a couple of comments below for that but let's just go on the offer template here and this is my offer template and a couple of things I have here is going to be my cover sheet. This is the most important part of a template. So I have buyer one. I have an X right here. And the only thing I need for a buyer is I need a. I just need an email. You do not need to put a phone number in or anything else. I actually suggest not putting that in here. Uh, personally so I'm gonna go ahead and put my work email address which is Adam at AHS Realty Pros and there's not a second buyer on here and so I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to where it says seller um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put seller one so I remember what it is I put an X there so it gets my attention for my templates going forward right here where it says the APN or the assessor's parcel number I have one through nine just input it on here you always want to have a APN whenever you're writing an offer it just makes things very clear in case there's any discrepancies and I'll show you how to go ahead and connect that soon on um, MLS connect where this is pulled up automatically so this is our template most important thing here is that everything is inputted the right way your brokerage name, address, the DRE number for the broker, um, the address for the broker, and we also got a couple of other uh, pieces of information. We got the legal name of the agent. We also got the DRE number here, email address and phone number for the agent. So all this information is, is good. Uh, and on my templates I don't have a seller's broker because every one of these transactions could be different and the nice thing is with MLS connect uh, it'll import this automatically which is really great so we're gonna go ahead and just scroll down and this is all done and the next document is actually gonna be a purchase agreement and this is the RPA residential purchase agreement and to find these in case you're new to this you click on the right where it says all forms right here and what you want to do is you want to click in that little box and type in RPA and it's going to be the very first one right here so choose that and the next document that we have here is the market conditions advisory I normally go by the abbreviations which on this one is MCA so I would click on that if you ever click on this and nothing happens 
that's just letting you know you already have it in your library. That's just a helpful tip. I did want to talk about this forms library right here. So when you click in here, a lot of times it's defaulted to the California Association of Realtors. However, there's a lot of different forms. And what I normally like to do is actually use the all um, form library so that way if I have a transaction Alameda County and I want to see if there's Alameda County disclosures I can actually type that in here so we can see there's Alameda County and we have Alameda City in here which is uh, right below it so make sure you are in the appropriate library by selecting the one you need the next form that we have in here is going to be the statewide buyers and sellers advisory I have a contingency removal in here in case I'm making an offer that's not contingent on inspections, appraisal, after I've talked to my uh, buyer. And I also have a homeowners uh, association advisory if the buyer is buying a property you know, with the HOA and they've already received the HOA disclosures. Um, I have uh, sometimes use a buyer exclusive, so that's in here depending on the client that I'm working with. And we have the Corona addendum here for um, an advisory for visitors. And as we can see on the right hand side right here, this one right here is for visitors because it's got, let me show you guys right here. This is a PED V. If it's for a seller, it will say PED S. And then last but not least, I have the Asian visual display uh inspection in here and so up top we have a couple of forms here's the form names the ones that I actually send over for uh, my offers the residential purchase agreement the market conditions advisory and i'm very careful about removing any contingencies before i speak to the buyer and the broker and if there's a homeowner association and you have the documents already go ahead and send in the BHAA and obviously you should have already used the P to gain access to the property so you can view it and if you need the DRE information for AHS Realty Pros it's going to be 01501007 and your DRE number for your brokers might be different this is pretty much all I need to go ahead and do um, a transaction to make an offer so now I'm going to show you how this template actually works out in the real world because we are going to write a really quick offer and before you do this one thing I highly advise is if you haven't done so guys already and I'll have a, another uh, video link down in the description box below you want to switch over to uh, digital ink 2.0 and I'm going to show you how to do that it's free it's works so great I think a lot of people that actually uh, know about this, they may cancel their DocuSign and it's hard to believe, but I use both and honestly, uh, Digital Ink 2.0 is just blowing DocuSign out of the water. It's so easy. I'm going to show you some pretty cool steps and things that you can do. So click on this little me arrow and you're going to go to profile. And when you're in profile, you want to go ahead and scroll over right here to where it says settings. And right under settings right here, uh, you have three different options at the top right here. You have digital ink 2.0. And this is the version you want to be using. By default, your time zone is most likely not going to be set correctly. So adjust your time zone. And you don't have to pay anything for this. So this is great. I haven't had to do any other changes other than that. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now we're going to go ahead and work on a transaction. So what we're going to do is go to transaction here. And we're going to go ahead and hit new. I'm going to hit purchase offer. And let's just say I was making a an offer on a property that we just sold at the brokerage here in Concord here. And I get to choose my template. I'm going to go ahead and choose my offer template. I'm going to click on MLS Connect here. In MLS Connect, at the very top section right here, you want to put in your, your 1595 number 
or whatever your login is for your MLS and you just choose the MLS that you have in your area and the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and type in the MLS ID number in our case the MLS ID number is this number right here for this property this just closed a few days ago and we can see that uh, this is the number that's needed here all right so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the number in here I just pasted it uh, using control V and I'm gonna say include the picture hit find and we're gonna go ahead and hit use this listing and I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down right here all right so now we have a transaction that's actually started and this is going to be very, very easy. The most important part uh, of making an offer is if you use a cover sheet, this will make your job super easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and update the buyer's information. So this buyer's name was Adam Baragzai, and I'm going to click that box off. And it was Adam does Adam at ahsrealtypros.com. And for the seller, let's just say the seller's name is Sally Seller. And there's not a second seller on here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And it's got the right house. And the APN on this property is right here. So uh, that's correctly inputted in here. And this is a residential home. And for this house, we're going to go ahead and offer the list price after I've spoken with my buyer. And my buyer is going to go ahead and put an initial deposit of $10,000 in. And they're going in here and they're going to go and um, uh, finance, let's say, uh, a total of $450,000. So basically um, they're gonna be putting in a total of ninety thousand dollars additional and that's gonna reflect that later on I always like to put an expiration date on my offers after I've spoken with the agent and let's just say I put an expiration date for tomorrow at uh, 6 30 p.m. Okay, so I'm going to go down here a little further. Um, my information here is going to be correct. I am going to be the buyer's broker. And normally this stuff comes right in here. If it doesn't, go ahead and type it in really quick. And all of this is correct if you see an agent's number or something wrong go ahead and fix it because it's going to show up on page 10 of the residential purchase agreement and i want to go ahead and fix up any typos that i see just to make this offer very professional and we're going to go ahead and hit back and i'm going to click on my purchase agreement here So there this is the very first form right here this is the agency disclosure the ad form and i'm going to go ahead and click off um buyer here for adam and the date everything else is going to come automatically i'm going to show you guys that in a second and then for my own side i'm going to go ahead and get a date in here for the other uh, selling side here, I'm not going to put any dates in here, even though it's the same broker 
And we got to pay special attention to that. I'm going to show you guys why in a second. So we got Adam Barogs out here as a buyer, Sally the seller. And we're going to go ahead and put the date in here that we're preparing the offer. I've spoken with the lender already. They said we can close in 25 days. And right here is the most important part. We got to make sure we disclose our agency. So in our case here, AHS Realty Pros or All Home Sold Realty Pros is representing the buyer and seller. Uh, even though we're two different agents, Kenny and I. And at the end of this video, I'm going to cover with you guys a little bit more about this agency disclosure right here. Uh, basically, if you were representing somebody from a different brokerage, you'd want to make sure that you check off that we're representing the buyer exclusively in that the other agency is going to be representing the seller exclusive and i'm going to have some more math uh, examples at the end for fha buyers basically we're offering five hundred fifty thousand dollars for this property their uh, buyer is going to be putting in ten thousand dollars by a wire and what i do is i normally don't check off anything here um and i'm going to go ahead and and go down a little further To right here where it says the first loan so my buyer was actually uh, approved in this example for uh, three and a quarter percent fixed rate and I'm gonna go ahead and put something here because they're not gonna be paying more than half a point there's no second lien on the property um, and this is a conventional loan here if it was FHA, I'm going to click off this box. And when I click this box off, you're going to see another form automatically populate. But let's just say it's FHA, just because I want to show you guys this, um, for this example at least. And we're going to go ahead and go further down. If I need to buy or credit any other additional uh, financing terms, it would go here. Uh, seller to credit buyer $10,000 towards buyer's closing cost. That's just an example. And we're going to go ahead and go down a little bit further here. So every time I'm sending over a offer, I always make sure that we have certain things attached. One is proof of funds and a pre-approval letter. You really need, do need to do that in the Northern California market. Um, in my appraisals, I can normally make this happen in 14 days uh, unless there's a weird holiday coming up. The lender already agreed to a 17-day loan contingency. And if you guys remember from the previous video, I actually have a lot of language in here. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that. All right, so when you use a template, normally everything comes over. That's the whole point of doing that template. In this case, something's happening with zip forms. However, Here's the wording if you guys want to pause it for a second to go ahead and pop that into your template or your offer. I'm going to go ahead and hit seller to pay for environmental. And I normally put JCP or property ID here after I've talked to my buyers about it. And these two boxes right here. Uh, this could be a whole different video. I can cover that a little bit more in depth if you guys want to know about it. I'm going to go ahead and check off the seller should pay for the carbon monoxide detector on here. And um, as well as these two boxes, I normally leave these blank unless there's some uh, local um, government inspections or compliance items that actually need to be met but we can talk about this you do have to watch out for this in certain cities that have sewer laterals or other kinds of uh, point of sale ordinances in place so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the buyer and seller go ahead and split title here through first American And you want to go ahead and do a 50-50 split just like this. And if you're not sure who pays what, 
everything in real estate is negotiable and they also have these customary uh, disclosures or publications that they put out um, which basically says who pays what in what counties so that's really helpful if you're new to writing offers and other costs right here seller to go ahead and pay for county transfer seller to pay for city transfer tax if there is one uh, HOA docs I normally always have the seller pick this up on here and then I'm gonna go scroll down a little bit and right here where it says seller I normally ask the seller to go ahead and pay for the home warranty which is upgraded and to cover the AC at least or if it has a spa or anything else you could actually go ahead and put the name of the the company right here I'm gonna use first American home warranty you can put the plan number if you want um, right next to it and if they're not getting a home warranty you want to make sure then you check this off and see how it gets rid of everything in that box so you'd want to uncheck that too so I'm gonna go ahead and ask for the home warranty from the seller stoves are gonna be staying with the house I've already verified that um, and anything else washer dryer is gonna go here and some other things to watch out for you want to make sure that you normally check this box off right here uh, that way you don't end up with a house that has some really large holes on uh, the wall where the TV mountain used to be and I normally put a time of 5 p.m. here on the date of possession so we're gonna go down a little further here and I normally put down five days for uh, the seller to give me any kind of disclosures if I'm doing a 10-day inspection period. I want to make sure my buyer actually has a little bit of time to go ahead and read this. Again, the seller has five days. The buyer has 10 days. I've spoken to the buyer. They're okay with the 10 days. I can get an inspector over there. And in case I am moving a contingency or anything, if I check off this box, um, it'll go ahead and populate the other form, which is a CR form, which stands for con contingency removal. That's gonna go there. I'm gonna scroll down a little further. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that 630 expiration date that we talked about earlier. I'm going to put my name in here. Scroll down even further. I have the buyer's inspection advisory. The buyer's name is already filled out here. The same thing with the privacy um, advisory here. We have the buyer's name pre-filled so now we're gonna go back to that FHA form that popped up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and come right here and we're gonna put 550,000 in here and this is part of a purchase agreement and it's dated the 24th. If you want to choose a date in here, you can, but it will automatically do it. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this over to the buyer to sign, and I'm going to show you guys how easy this is. So we have our purchase agreement. We're going to send over the mark conditions uh, advisory. I always like to have this filled out. My buyer knows that there's an HOA and he's actually received the disclosure ahead of time. So I'm gonna send that over and we're gonna go ahead and also send over the FHA clause here. Um, I've already seen the house with the buyer so I do already have a PV on file for them. So let's get the sign now. And we're gonna go ahead and hit new here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and choose a purchase agreement. And then I'm going to go choose the buyer's association um, advisory right here, which is BHAA was the, the form name for it. And we're going to scroll down a little further. And here we have the FHA clause. I'm going to go ahead and put everything in order the way I want it. So I like to make sure that this uh, is not at the bottom here. Um, but I always want to make sure that the RPA is the very first form that they're going to sign. Because that very first form on there is the agency disclosure. So let's just say we're going to call this $550,000 offer with $10,000. EMD or earnest money deposit and loan for four hundred fifty thousand and I'm using that digital ink 2.0 and I'm gonna go ahead and choose the buyer here And I'm also going to choose the selling agent, which happens to be the same person for demo purposes. And I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, put these guys in order. You normally want to have the buyer sign first and then you should sign last. Um, we're going to leave it this way. If you ever wanted to remove this order, you can just unclick that box. It gets rid of it. Or you can go ahead and choose number one for both now they'll be treated equal as an agent I normally like to sign last just to make sure I didn't miss something so I'm going to scroll this guy back up here and this right here is going to be the additional security feature basically it's five dollars extra per transaction a lot of buyers and sellers don't like this, but if you do have somebody that wants to use it, go for it. And basically it'll text them a code each time before they sign. Okay, so here's a nice thing with this, since I'm using all these forms and they're part of the library, everything's automatically put into place where the signature should be most of the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll up here. So we got the very first form. It has my signature in the right place uh, as the buyer, the, the, the selling agent's information is here too. And then we have the possible representation of more than one buyer or seller this is filled out correctly we have the wire fraud advisory this is done correctly and the initials are already automatically put in here keep scrolling down here we have the market conditions advisory has their initial right there explains to them that uh, real estate agents are not psychic uh, market conditions do change and we also have the Buyers Homeowners Association Advisory. The FHA clause with the price inputted, which can save you a lot of time and keeps your loan from getting delayed. And so here's the nice thing with uh, this 
Digital Ink 2.0. And uh, first of all, you can actually save now. And let's just say there was a form that I was supposed to put in here for whatever reason. I was making an offer and uh, I forgot to attach it. Instead of starting all over and uh, dealing with this all over again, I just want to show you some of the cool things this can do really quick. So I'm going to go add an external document. And in this external document over here, let's just say this is going to be a form that I need from the brokerage. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the offices closure. And for example, let's say that I need something um, for the earthquake questionnaire. This uh, sometimes needs to be signed by the buyer, right? So let's just say this was filled out here and we also needed this form right here for the key. So we'll go ahead and upload that and we'll go ahead and also upload the key form. Now, if you actually look down here, the very last two forms are those two that I just uploaded in here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. I've already chosen the signing parties here. And the nice thing is, I know these two forms are at the very end here, and here they are. Uh, this is the rekey disclosure, and this one right here is going to be the earthquake hazard report. And the, one of the nice things here is, let's just say I needed to go ahead and uh, get some stuff completed here. Uh, one of the things that I could do is if I wanted, I could go ahead and, and uh, come right here where the buyer is and I can go drag their name over. This is such a great feature, right? Uh, and it makes things super easy. But let's just say I need to put the APN number in here. I'm gonna come and cl click on this box here and put it in the right place. And now I can go ahead and type in the APN number. And this example is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And even better, let's just say the buyer had to make a couple of uh, multiple choice decisions. And this is normally filled out for the seller. So this is just an example, but they needed to go ahead and hit yes or no here. Or maybe they even had a third option or a fourth option to go and uh, say it doesn't apply to them or they weren't sure so each time I'm gonna go ahead and hit this little wheel right here and I'm gonna hit add radio and that's what it then the buyer now can only choose one of these options you can't choose all of them just one which is really great and the second thing that's gonna happen here is you also have a couple other buttons so let's just say I was sure that I talked to the buyer and uh, they said they're gonna go ahead and do a certain thing so then I can go ahead and put that Xbox right there there and saying well they haven't received this report for example um, another thing that I can also do is I could also make some initial drops if I needed to anywhere I want and if I needed a date at, in a certain uh, part of the form which we can go ahead and come down here just for example reasons we're gonna go ahead and come down here and if I needed a date I can go ahead and drop that right down here and just grab a signature and if the property address wasn't input it I can go ahead and put that in here too And I can drop the name here. Drop a signature. Drop a date. 
and this is such a cool little option right here you can actually go ahead and drop this down and what it does is gives them a couple of groups uh, to initial so this this is pretty uh, pretty cool option as well and there's also another great feature if you, in case you need to go ahead and and get the buyers initials on 20 or 30 pages and you don't want to do them one by one go ahead and hit this little icon right here and basically they can uh, select which person you want them to sign so in this case is the buyer and I can say select all and basically it, it chose 16 pages for the buyer to sign here two here two on the BHAA two on the FHA clause one on the earthquake questionnaire and also one on the reiki uh, questionnaire I'm gonna go ahead and hit close here and basically everything here is signed and again there's no more loading up or waiting for it to pop up and uh, sitting here just twirling trying to load with digital ink 2.0 now I'm gonna go ahead and hit send and here I can make a customized invitation so if my buyer gets a lot of emails and I want to call it a special code word uh, in this case I wanted to call it the code word Cobra uh, I could do that in here and it's so much easier for them to find it if you just want to send a regular invitation go ahead and hit just send invitation and the invitation is out and we're gonna go ahead and show you guys what the actual buyer sees now at the end of the video I'm going to show you how you can always track the status of a digital package so you can know if the buyer has signed what's happening or if there's any errors okay so here is the package that's requesting signatures from the buyer and I'm gonna go ahead and hit start signing so they can actually select a custom signature by drawing their signature select the font size in this case I'm just gonna hit accept I'm gonna hit start and I'm gonna sign here sign here sign here these are all the initials on the bottom of the residential purchase agreement aka the RPA and right here so right here this is the liquidated damages and when they click on this they can either opt in or opt out you have to talk to your broker about um, what what is acceptable in our case here we're off uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, accept here as most of these contracts uh, most brokers want get these initialed in the right place and this one right here is for the arbitration we're gonna accept we're gonna initial here I'm gonna sign here initial at the bottom of page 10 on the RPA I'm gonna sign the buyers inspection uh, advisory here as the buyer I'm gonna sign the Privacy Act advisory as a buyer also the market conditions advisory we also got the buyers homeowners association advisory and we got the FHA clause and these are those other forms that we actually made ourselves so let's just say I need a checkbox is there initial is here I can choose one of these options but I can't choose them all that's why this radio button that I showed you earlier is so helpful if this was the answer that they wanted and um, I can go ahead and put an X through there if it said uh, you're uh, you are uh, uh, getting this roof inspection or you're not getting this roof inspection that would make it easy for those kind of things and then I can sign right here again when I sign that those dates everything comes in automatically any of the radio buttons can do a lot of different things for you and I'm gonna hit next and pay special attention to this uh, graph up here because you it shows that I'm at 96 percent and there was a little icon that was uh, hidden behind there so you want to make sure that the uh, buyer is able to see that progress bar so I'm gonna go ahead and hit complete let me know that I need to actually sign as a an agent now I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept 
I'm going to hit start. And I'm going to go ahead and hit complete. I am done. And if you wait a few minutes, you'll actually get a couple of following emails. One of the emails is going to be confirmation that the person signed gives you the IP address. And then the second one right here that you should get after that is uh, going to be um, a summary of what actually got signed, which you can download right here. Or you could go back into zip forms and download it from there. And basically, these are the forms I would want to get over to the listing agent and get my offer accepted. Hey guys, we're going to talk about uh, FHA deals really quick, just so you guys get a better sense of the math here. So as you guys can see on traditional FHA financing, the buyer is required to put 3.5% down. So on this $550,000 transaction that we had, if we do the math really quick, the buyer would have to come in with $19,500 out of their pocket. It could be a gift. Talk to the lender about that. However, don't ask for a seller credit for the $19,500. That may not fly and will not fly 99% uh, of the times. And so we said the buyer was going to put in the $10,000 um, on the previous offer. And now, since we're doing FHA, instead of getting a $450,000 loan, we're going to get a $530,500 loan. So if we actually jump into zip forms and plug these numbers in, I'm going to show you how it actually calculates this for you. Okay, so we're back in zip forms and we're on the cover sheet here. So I'm going to enter the cover sheet. And we're going to go ahead and change this offer around a little bit. So the purchase price is still the same. We're still putting the $10,000 earnest money deposit in here. But now we are actually going to go ahead and take out a loan for $530,000 and $500. And you might be wondering where does other $9,500 that the buyer would actually have to come up with. How is that affected? So I'm going to show you guys that right now. We're going to go ahead and hit save. And if we go to the residential purchase agreement now. And when we scroll down here, we can actually see that the buyer is putting in $10,000. Here's the loan amount. And zip form to automatically calculate the buyer needs the remaining $9,500. And one thing to keep into account, this buyer needs $19,500 for their down payment. This does not cover any kind of closing costs. So closing costs would be 1, 2, 3%. Talk to the lender any, uh, about that. But... Make sure you guys keep that um, information top of mind so that way you're not working with a buyer and they only have $19,500 for a $550,000 property and you go to close and didn't ask where they were actually getting the money for the closing costs. So uh, that does happen. Uh, pay special attention to it. And thanks again. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found that video to be helpful. If it was, make sure you guys hit that. Uh, thumbs up button hit the subscribe button and I'm gonna have a video link below on how to go ahead and use the digital ink 2.0 in depth show you guys some pretty cool features different ways of using it and um, we'll see you guys on the next video and if you guys haven't done so already you also want to check out the videos that I've made in the very beginning on how to set up templates for listings uh, the the whole process from uh, start to finish but I did want to make a quick little video for you guys for the offer template. So again, thanks again. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My name is Adam Barakzai. I am the brokerage manager here at AHS Realty Pros. And here our number is going to be 925-471-6907. And we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.